This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Bingo. I told you we're coming back. We came back. <laughs> this is a technology show today. This is Think Tech, Tech Tech Talks. And this is Dennis Wong. You saw Dennis Wong before. Hi, Dennis. Hi. It's good to be back. Sea Grant College. Nice yeah. to see you. Yeah. He came and told us how we should put our, house, our houses in order, so to speak, That's before right. any storm and the possibility of any storm. And now we have this sort of delicious moment. We're going to look back and see what he said and whether people did it and, and how it affected things. And John Braverton, thank you. Thank you for coming down, John. Well, well, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. So um, uh, you're with uh, uh, NOAA and with the National Weather Service. How does that work? So I am a forecaster at the National Weather Service office, Central Pacific Hurricane Center here. We're responsible for all the hurricane forecasts for the Hawaii area. Did I spell your name right? Bravender. Bravender, yeah, okay. So anyway, um, thank you for coming down. We want to hear about the, you know, about Lane. Uh, you, know, you know, the problem is in the past we've had hurricanes, but there's been such a, you know, a, 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 a hiatus between them right. that we forget how concerned we were on Hurricane 1 by the time we get to Hurricane 2. That's over. <laughs> now we're going to have is at Syriatum hurricanes. It's the way it works. And so we have to be more concerned about it. So the first thing I like to do today in approaching this from a tech point of view is uh, sort of, um, you know, restate what you were suggesting a couple of times already on ThinkTech. Sure. And, uh, and uh, tell us how a, a responsible homeowner who cared about his property and his family uh, would have been prepared, what he would have done had he listened okay. at, at the time Lane started. Sure. Okay, so if you're really prepared, there would be no need to go rush to the store for supplies or, um, or to buy plywood. And there would be no reason, and people shouldn't, return those supplies after the event or, um, you know, because um, it puts a burden on some of the stores who are making an effort to uh, help the community. For myself, um, all I did was, because uh, I felt that I was pretty prepared, was I, I bought two gallons of gas, because um, I don't like to store a lot of gas around the house. But um, if you prepare properly, it's almost effortless to be constantly prepared. You don't want to prepare for a hurricane and then be come unprepared by returning your supplies and mm -hmm. going through the cycle. A lot of the stores weren't taking returns after that happened. Okay. The people, yes. Apparently a lot of people return their supplies or try. Okay, yeah. So like for myself, um, you know, the, the new guidance is two weeks of food and water per person. Okay, so and it's one gallon per person per day. So family of four would need 56 gallons of water for two weeks. If you go to a Costco and get a case of water that's five or six gallons. They would need 11 cases, which is hard to do. For myself, what we do is just, we just buy a case or two or three of water, and it's bought like weeks in advance because water has a shelf life of like a, a, almost a nine or ten months. And then um, we supplement it. We put it in water containers. There are these things we mentioned not previously in the show called water bobs or aquapods. You put the, the bladder in your yeah, bathtub. Yeah, with a bladder in your bathtub that uh, holds 100 gallons of water. You just get that at Amazon. And in fact, so we were prepared, and the more prepared you are, the more able you are to help other people. Mm. So uh, because we felt we were pretty prepared, we actually gave some of our water containers to our neighbors, and we gave some of our plywood to some of other neighbors. I mean, the bottom line is... Um, in terms of your supplies, it should be effortless. In terms, in, in, in regarding food, I never, you never buy food. If you're not going to eat Vienna sausage, don't put it in your emergency <laughs> kit because it's, it's going to expire. So if you say you eat a lot of corn, so buy a case of corn and it has a shelf life of two or three years. And as soon as you buy it, put the expiration date mm -hmm. on it in big black letters and put it at the bottom of your 
case, and then one, within one year after it's about to expire, you start eating that corn. That's how it's effort, an effortless to keep your emergency supplies. And then regarding plywood, you know, a lot of people bought plywood and they probably, oh, I gotta get plywood, but they have no idea of how to really put it up. So you need to plan and prepare it. I, I again, refer to the homeowner's handbook. Um, this is prepare. Dennis's book. Well, this is very University of Sea Grant. Sea Grant's book. Yeah. And you should have this and you should abide by it. Yeah. So, uh, because if you prepare a panel, it'll take an hour or maybe an hour and a half to you know, pre-cut it, pre-label, pre-measure, pre-drill. But once it's prepared, it's easy to store for other events and it's easy to put up. It'll take five minutes to put up. So that's how you prepare so it becomes effortless and you prepare always into the future. Yeah, and, and these days with that Syriatum storms, we should always be thinking about this. Are we properly prepared? Yes. So I was bugging my wife for months after our first show. Yeah. I said, you know, you got to buy water. We got to have water. We got to have some food just in case. You know, just a little bit of food carry us over. I don't really get hungry, you know, when a storm starts. Yeah. And she didn't listen to me. And all of a sudden, all the neighbors were running down to the Safeway and she, she found water there and mm -hmm. she bought tons of soup. Soup's okay. a good idea, isn't it? Soup. Yeah. <laughs> Where we got stuck is we did not know, and you can answer it now, right here as a scoop on Think Tech. Okay, I'll try to. <clears throat> do you leave the windows open or do you leave the windows closed? Oh, you're supposed to leave the windows closed. You never Completely open them. Okay. That's a myth. Two myths. Don't tape your windows. Don't open your windows, okay? You're supposed to have a complete wind and rain resistant envelope around your house. Nothing gets in your house. You treat hurricane, wind, rain, and debris like a burglar. You don't want a burglar in your house, right? Yeah. You don't want any, any hurricane elements in your house. Yeah. And then, you, you know, people don't realize, we realized last weekend that when you have a hurricane, you stay home if you can. Right. Hopefully if, you can, you don't have to go to a shelter. If you stay home, you have to find ways to occupy yourself, right. especially if you don't have an electrical power, which we didn't have a problem with now. But, but suffice to say, I, I, you know, we stayed home for four days in our house we got along the whole time. Isn't that amazing? That's great. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> but you have, to, you have to see that as a, a, what could be a very long time when you're just at home. And, and it requires planning, too, because you can't shelter in place if you're in a flood zone, so if it, a high-risk flood zone. Like a, a, um, and in the book, we explain how to look up your flood zone. If you have any risk of flooding, because there's many, you know, hazards related to a hurricane. There's the flooding, the rain, the wind. But if there's any risk of flooding, you can't stay in your uh, house. And then also, um, whether you're able to shelter in place is a function of how strong the storm is and how strong your house is. And that's where the shelter in place table we have comes into play. Yeah. So this goes to warnings. That's what you do, John, isn't it? Yep. So at some point, you know, in, in any kind of disaster like this, there may be, as Dennis says, a need to leave. They need to get out of your house. It's a hard choice to make because, you know, whatever you see on television is not going to be that, that, that granular. And you're not going to know exactly what's happening. You know, you're going to know the news, but not the exact, the exact state of affairs. And you may not know that you should leave at a given moment. So how do you find out? What will you tell me? How will you tell me? that I, now I have to leave and seek shelter outside my house. That's, uh, we rely a lot on emergency management community and the media to communicate those messages. Uh, we work very closely with the, the state and county EMs for uh, decisions like that, for opening shelters, which shelters, so hurricane evacuation shelters to open, uh, would, any areas that would need evacuation. Uh, we provide, all, well, we provide to the public as well. Anybody can see the forecast that we, we make. And then the emergency management officials will go through and decide, you know, based on their local knowledge, which areas are most susceptible to flooding, to other hazards uh, such as wind or uh, even surge along the coastline. So, are you, I mean, I live in Uwano. So, are you going to tell me that Uwano, you guys better go now and go down to the school or something, um, because it's time for Uwano to get away from the floods or whatever? 
Um, and how do you and how do you refine that message so you're telling just just the people in Uwana? That's uh, one of the, the the most problematic things uh, as far as uh, taking the large scale hurricane forecast. Uh, we will forecast where a storm could go, uh, and even that there's a, a fair degree of uncertainty. And you'll see a gradual ramp up in impacts as well. Uh, for example, on the Big Island, we saw rain begin well ahead of time. Uh, wind will increase as well th over a period of time. We usually use the onset of tropical storm force winds, which is about 40 miles an hour, as the, the drop dead time for when preparations need to be completed. Uh, beyond that point, it's not safe to be outside. So actually, a lot of organizations will use uh, a, a time frame before that. We, we estimate they'll begin at this time, therefore they'll pull their people off the street six, 12 hours before that, just to add that safety buffer. Will you ever go out, you know, like and tell them door to door or street to street, it's time for you to evacuate? Uh, sometimes uh, the uh, police will do that, especially for coastal areas. We generally don't evacuate for wind hazards but we will evacuate for water hazards. So if there is a storm surge expected, then that would cause an evacuation. And that's where, as Dennis mentioned, uh, knowing your flood areas, uh, because a storm surge would be water from the ocean moving inland, whereas as we've seen, the, the biggest impact that we've had from Lane was from the freshwater flooding, very heavy rainfall causing problems there. And that'll be covered by some of the flood inundation maps. Well, you know, it's an, always an interesting question. We're having a, Carl Kim of the National Disaster Preparedness Training Center next week, you know, and he's, his word is preparedness. That's what right. he does. As your word, I think, preparedness. So the question is, you know, did anybody call you on Thursday or Friday, Dennis? What do I do now, Dennis? <laughs> yes, a lot of people called. you call. go out to help them? <laughs> no, a lot of people call, and, and you know who actually called the most were the TV and radio stations. <laughs> and I always tell them, you know, contact us two or three months before hurricane season. Or, or at least when National Weather Service has their annual announcement. Because two days before the event, it's very hard to prepare. You may be able to prepare at least to get your plan, your evacuation plan together, or even supplies. But for the things that we cover in the homeowner's handbook, strengthening your house, there's you very little, little lead time. There's very, there's very little, I mean, there is, you know, conceivably, if you have a few windows, and you could um, get the plywood and and uh, cover some of those windows. Or if you have a simple configuration of your roof wall, you may be able to put some of the easier hurricane clips to install in. But um, a lot of the things we cover in the book are not that hard. You know, they could people could do it in a Saturday Saturday or two, but it's very hard to do two days before the event. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. So. and, and uh, you know, your role, I mean, I, I, I'm asking, I'm saying, your role during the event is um, not to get out there. You don't, you don't necessarily want to help people on the street or yeah. um, help them get water or soup or whatnot. Your, your job is really to the extent it's done, it's done before the hurricane starts, before the disaster starts, right? right. You're into preparedness, like Carl Kim, right. making plans, advising people how to prepare. But that may, may not be the same for you, John. Are you, are you, were you busy over the past weekend? Yes, you were. Extraordinarily, yes. <laughs> uh, leading up to a, a, a big event like this, um, there's so many things that, that come into play. The, the, the workload in our office between the, the, the hurricane forecasting, the, the local, uh, local statements for Hawaii, uh, phone calls, media interviews, uh, everything like that, uh, briefings, uh, working with decision makers, working uh, with all sorts of other government agencies, with FEMA, with the Coast Guard, with the, the state and counties. It uh, make, makes for uh, quite a few long days. We're going to have a short day right now. We're going to have a one-minute break. Okay, when we come back, we'll have a longer time to ask you guys what happened and see your clips and photos. Ooh, I'm so excited about that. we we'll take a one-minute break. Sure. Uh, uh, John and now... Uh, um, um, Dennis will be right back after this break. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. 
Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrielli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matter to tech, matter to science, uh, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests. The students uh, of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Okay, Dennis Wong and John Breverton. Did I get it right? Breverter. 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 Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Um, we're back. We're going to talk about more about the hurricane that just happened. Um, uh, uh, Dennis is with uh, the Sea Grant College at UH Manoa, and John is with uh, uh, NOAA and uh, the National Weather Service. Um, so let's go. Let's go. You have some great graphics. We really have to see them. So let's look at Dennis's graphics first. Dennis, give us a, a, a you know like a slideshow, will you? Okay, real quick. Um, let me go to the first one then. It's coming, coming soon. Mm, that looks like mine. You want to go over that then, John? Sure. Uh, this is just a, a, qu a quick look for what caused Lane to weaken. Uh, the, the winds on the right, okay. pretty strong winds from the east, and then upper level, strong winds from the west, wind shear. That was our saving grace. Okay. So that shows the wind shear that we just uh, spoke about. Okay, what else you got? <laughs> that okay. looks like a hurricane too. <laughs> you want me to mention that? Yeah, please. It's on my photo, but um, this is a common uh, a scene probably two or three days before expected arrival of, you know, uh, lane and again um, people if they prepare properly they won't need to go to the store for food um, you know um, uh, have your supply have a have a plan to recycle your emergency supplies um, buy things with a long shelf life oh here's a hurricane clips we're going to talk about that these are uh, um, a way to strengthen your house and um, uh, especially the roof-to-wall connection. That's the, the weakest part of it. Where that. was that picture taken? It's probably taken at Home Depot. Okay. Yeah, so you can buy these clips you're talking about in the book at Home Depot or any of the others, huh? Yes. They're, you know, anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar fifty. or it's not, They're not that expensive, and it's not that hard to uh, add, clip your house. Uh, almost every house could be strengthened. Cheaper than a bottle of water. Well, yeah, you must drink expensive water. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else we got? We're going to show some of these okay, pictures now again, and some just, later. Uh, just more connectors. Um, um, we, there's really, uh, we have methods uh, to strengthen both single wall and double wall houses. And we're trying to tie the roof to the foundation. Um, there are a lot of new options uh, people should explore. And if they do a lot of these things, they could actually get, they may actually be able to get insurance, hurricane insurance discounts. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, what's next? Yeah. I guess we're jumping back and forth. <laughs> okay, hey, John, what, what is that now? This more wind shear? Yeah, this is just the, the, the zoom in of the, the wind field. Uh, the, the lower half of the image is. 20,000 feet below or so. This is from the, uh, the weather balloon that we launched from our data collection office in Lihue. Uh, so what, what is that showing us? Uh, it looks like so this the is a measurement one, of the wind. Yeah, this is uh, the, the right hand side of the It's a image. scale. Yep. This is not the wind itself or a representation of the wind. It's a, it's a scale of the wind. Yeah, you know? yeah. The, the little uh, barbs, uh, 10 knots, for, so uh, 30, 35 knots down in the low levels. You know, pretty windy day down near the surface. And westerly winds of uh, 30, 40 knots as well. And the difference between those two, we have the bottom half of the hurricane 
trying to move westward and the top half trying to move eastward. That's what disrupted that circulation and caused that dramatic collapse on Friday. Thank God for that. Yes. But you know, when the, when the lane was first coming, um, I got a great title for our show today, Learning to Live with the Likes of Lane. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when it first started coming, you know, they said the winds, you know, this is east of Hawaii, the winds were like 160 miles an hour before it got mm -hmm. sheared with the trades. Um, now, at 160 miles an hour, would your system work? You mean, uh, uh, it's, it's very hard. Um, you know, 160 mile per hour winds, very strong, and generally, the uh, force on a building is not proportional to the wind speed, but the square of the wind speed. 160 miles per hour is almost like a catastrophic, you know, event. Can tear but, anything apart. Yeah. Yeah, but um, the thing is, uh, people need to strengthen their houses because a lot of times, say there's a Category Five hurricane, but it'll only have, like, you know, a diameter of 15 miles or so. It may and you know, the, the larger diameter of it, maybe 200, mile, 200, 250 miles across, when that, you know, a large part of the island may be covered by the weaker winds, and there it's, it's so going to make a difference, yeah. 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 So, well, Category but, 5, I mean, I, I wasn't aware of this until now, but I'm learning, yeah. and, you know, we're all learning about this for the, the new time to come. You were saying? Well, yeah, and if you look at that shelter-in-place table, the cat, I mean, there's, uh, remember the three types of buildings? With, remember the um, three little pigs? Oh, yes. The straw, this wood, is, this and is stone? In the book. <laughs> yes. This is in okay. the book. You're yeah. going to look at this book. It's got cartoons for the kids, yeah? No. <laughs> but, um, yes, I mean, this, this, the, the, stronger, the strongest buildings will be the stone. Then the next will be the double, double wall house. And the last will be the single wall house. You can strengthen even a single wall house. Um, to make it um, suitable for, say, a Category 1 hurricane. And then a double wall house is inherently stronger, and you could do a lot of things and maybe fine for a two or three or four, you know. What about uh, a five? Well, you know, um, if it's really, really bad, I mean, think about, you may want to still shelter in place because there's some, probably some buffer. You know, anytime you shelter in place, um, the point is to stay in the, as long as you're outside of a flood zone, have no risk of flooding. The point is to stay in the lowest floor in the interior. What, what about going building. out on the street? No, it's crazy. <laughs> because but, things are flying on the yes. street. No, the reason you stay in the lowest floor in the interior is because when there's a hurricane and the damage occurs, everything peels from the outside and goes in. It's like a peeling an onion. So, you know, um, you can make a double wall house pretty strong. And my contingency is no matter how strong a hurricane, I'm going to stay in my house. My house, I feel, is pretty strong, you know, because I've worked on it uh, a lot. Done a you lot. followed the, all the guidelines. Right, yeah, okay. and there's, there's <laughs> things that people could do there, too. Um, inherently, there are houses that are stronger than my house, but I retrofitted it to make it stronger than those houses. So... Um, it's a function, it's almost like a body, like how strong were you born and what have you done after to make it stronger? Right, so, it's an ongoing, ongoing process. Yeah, and it's all related to the building codes also. That's why it's very important to have very strong building codes and implement them properly. The current, in 88, the, the building codes required hurricane clips on Oahu, in 95, they required a continuous load path connection on Oahu. And in 2012, roughly, the state building code required a continuous load path connection and window protection or safe room. That's where you go for a Category 5. Mm -hmm. But the counties have not implemented it all uniformly. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. Yes. So uh, the, to go to the hurricanes that are Category 5, that's, is that the top number, John? Mm -hmm. that, that, that doesn't is. get any worse than 5, huh? Yeah, very, and what, very what strong. Is, how do you define five? Winds up to what? Uh, 160 mile and above is uh, the, the threshold. That's uh, the, the Sephir-Simpson hurricane scale is determined by the wind, how strong the winds are. 
So you know, starting with hurricane force at 74 miles an hour, going up incrementally, and then you get to, to category five, and that's the extreme end, which uh, for a brief period of time, a lane was mm. as it passed that approach from the south. Okay, let's look at a video and see if we can imagine and feel the power here. <laughs> these are video clips of, of these weather formations recently. Okay, what is that, John? Okay, we're looking at a satellite image. Uh, this is a 24-hour loop of Lane uh, on Friday from uh, ending at 4 p.m., so 4 p.m. Thursday to 4 p.m. Friday, showing that pretty much fast catastrophic collapse of the, the thunderstorms right around the center. The brighter colors indicate higher cloud tops, so the, 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 the blues to the reds to the greens are thunderstorms higher in the atmosphere, indicating uh, a, a strong updraft, strong system. That, that'd be the center of yep. the eye, mm -hmm. uh, around the eye. By, by this point, the eye had filled in a bit because it had started to weaken. Yeah. But in a strong the, hurricane, the eye would be bigger, yep. more defined. Yep, which yep. the other, the, the longer loop does show when it was passing mm -hmm. south of the area. But this kind of just highlights how fast those thunderstorms collapse. This is not, this, this eye, or the, this area that you're looking mm -hmm. at right now is not over the islands directly, huh? Nope. It's southwest it's, of the island. Yeah, it is south of it. it this is the, the point where the hurricane was just west of the big island, very slowly moving northward. And uh, the, the southwesterly winds aloft just pulled the thunderstorms away. The, the mid-level center became separated, and the, the thunderstorms just collapsed. How'd you get these pictures? You take a plane? No, this is um, our geostationary satellite. We have uh, two of them in the U.S. Uh, GOES, a geostationary operational environmental satellite. One of them is overlooking us, western U.S., out through us, and uh, is, is primarily what we use uh, when we have hurricanes over the open ocean. Let's go to the next one. Okay, what's this, John? Now, this is a, a sim the, the same satellite infrared imagery uh, taking the, a slightly longer view, this goes from Monday afternoon through Saturday. Uh, so I where it starts see, I off can see here. islands under there. Those are real islands. Yeah, yeah, those, those are Hawaiian islands. Those are us. Yeah. And then for the first few images, each image is about every two hours or so. And when it starts off, you can see that well-defined eye, as at this point is a high in Category 4 or a low in Category 5. Very warm eye, uh, very cold cloud tops around it. So where the where the uh, most forceful winds are they in that blue area or are they be beyond that outside of that? They'd be right around the eye, right surrounding it. Uh, there is intense convection uh, right in the eye wall, and those yeah. were where you'll have the the strongest winds mm -hmm. right near that edge. So is <clears throat> is this this is a picture that we have lots of cop? I mean, are there lots of hurricanes like this? The way this thing configured, or is this uh, unusual in some way? Uh, a, category, a strong hurricane like this is not uncommon. Uh, we, don't, we tend not to see them near us uh, that frequently, in, in part because of the, the strong wind shear that we have over us. Trade winds at the surface, uh, southwesterly winds aloft, but obviously it can be, uh, can happen. And actually, uh, even just uh, two weeks beforehand, Hector, Hurricane Hector was a major hurricane, I think it was a category three, as it passed just just south of the island. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the last of the three videos and see what we can make of that. What do you think? Oh, oh this, okay, this is the, uh, the, the track forecast. Uh, this is a, a loop of our hurricane forecast from the Central Pacific Hurricane Center, starting with when we uh, picked up responsibility for Lane when it crossed 140 West and continuing through Saturday morning when we dropped all of tropical storm watches and warnings. Uh, just to give an idea of how that track evolved, starts off uh, with some uncertainty as to uh, where it'll go, but by the time we start putting warnings out for the islands, it actually looks pretty consistent as far as moving northward, weakening, and then taking that westward track, which is all tied together, actually. Yeah. It wouldn't have taken that westward turn had it not weakened. But had it maintained its strength, maintained it as a hurricane, it would have kept moving northward. Real, so if, if, it, if it had crossed our path and come onto us, mm -hmm. it would have been stronger by definition. Yeah, yeah. Can we go back to that one? Because I just want to um, 
Can we go back to that yeah, yeah. video? Yeah, yeah. Let's go back to the one that looks like a caterpillar. I want it, this is a very useful product by National Weather Service. And again, they put out their forecast every six hours, 5 a.m., 11 a.m., 5 p.m., 11 p.m. People need to know what that cone, that white cone of uncertainty is. And what's also very useful is that they added, there's a light brown circle and a, a dark brown circle. The light brown circle is like the extent or the diameter or radius of tropical storm force winds. And the dark brown is the extent or radius of hurricane force winds. So people, if they're tracking this and they're on the National Weather Service website, of how strong your house is, and you can always make it stronger by retrofitting, and how strong the winds are you're going to encounter. We're, yeah. out of, we're out of time, guys, but the good news is, John, okay, and Dennis, we are going to have another show in, in half an hour or less, and we're going to continue this whole discussion okay. with Maria Tomei and the Energy Show, and we're going to find out at that time what we learned, okay. what we learned in preparing your property what we learned in identifying the problems and giving notice to the public, and uh, what we learned in terms of dealing with other storms, whether it's Miriam and Norman or whatever else is coming down the pike um, in the future. This is that's really important. So we'll come back in a few minutes. If I just stay there, you can have a beer, and we'll come back in uh, uh, 20 minutes or so, and you'll hear the rest of the story. Wow, more exciting. Oh, wow. <laughs> Be right back. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you brought up the point about that. Expand on that and mention what, what defines the cone. Yeah, where, where that comes from. Maybe you could talk that. Okay. Yeah, I'm talking about So this is a five. But it gets modified.